story of money is part of a long history of civilization. It has been recorded on slabs and stones, on walls and monuments, in tombs, in Bibles, and on manuscripts. The mysterious history of money is a legacy inspired by progress and industry, capitalism and freedom, wealth and civilization. It has also been inspired by theft and death, by totalitarianism and government demands, by weakness and government force. So how does a civilized and free nation conduct its monetary policy? First, a little history. Before Benjamin Franklin was considered by King George III to be a traitorous rebel, he was first a diplomat sent to the British king to engage in negotiations aimed at avoiding the pending American Revolution. At a dinner party one night in London, Franklin was asked to give a small talk about the American colonies across the ocean. Thinking about what would impact the British the most, Franklin told them, well, you can leave your ship with just your baggage, walk beyond the furthest homestead, and become an immediate landowner. His dinner companions couldn't believe him. You mean they asked you don't need the permission of the government or a loan from the government's bank to own property in the colonies across the sea? When they finally quieted down, Franklin told them a shocking truth. It's quite simple. We have created our own currency. Well, who were these colonists, colonists to create their own currency? How could a currency possibly sustain prosperity without a central bank to control it? Who were these colonists to own property without the government's approval or the involvement of the government's bank? The British Parliament almost immediately outlawed colonial scrip. The scrip were printed demand notes that represented gold stored in banks and homes. They weren't the worthless Federal Reserve notes that we have today. They were real money created by merchants and bankers and the col colonial governments. Franklin brought the unhappy news with him back to Philadelphia. Later, he would be known to say, you know, we would gladly have borne the little tax on tea and other matters had it not been they, they took from us our money, which, when they took it, created great unemployment and dissatisfaction within a year. The poor houses were filled. The hungry and the homeless walked the streets everywhere. While the phrase taxation without representation is tyranny may have been the colonists' battle cry, as much suffering was visited upon the colonists by the Bank of England as was done by the King of England. So you see, one of the founders of the United States of America had no difficulty whatsoever identifying the root cause of misery in the colonies, central banks controlling money. But Americans today know precious little about money and how it is used against us. You hear me speak often on Freedom Watch about debt and taxes, about gold and the Federal Reserve. Here's a little Economics 101. The topics dealing with issues of taxing and spending are what's known as fiscal policy. And the topics dealing with issues of inflation, the Fed, and the creation of money itself are what's known as monetary policy. Monetary policy is about how money is created. And fiscal, to policy, fiscal policy is where it's destroyed by the government. It's not enough that Congress and the government destroy the fruits of our labors and consume them with wasteful spending and thieving taxation. But the manner in which money is created by the Federal Reserve out of thin air with no gold or anything of value to back it, is abhorrent, immoral, unconstitutional, and quite simply, un-American. If you or I printed cash in our basements and used it in voluntary transactions, we'd go to jail. The Constitution says that only Congress can coin money and set its value. So how did this private bank get to print our money? The government gets its powers from the consent of the governed. We didn't give that power to a private bank. In America today, we have a private central bank with the monopoly power of printing money. It is an unelected, secretive, and dangerous institution that manipulate, manipulates the economy by destroying the purchasing power of those who work and save and transferring it to those who kill and steal, tax and destroy. What is it? You know, it's the Federal Reserve. Twice before, we had national banks that were abolished by Congress, but the creature from Jekyll Island, that's the place off the coast of Georgia where the Federal Reserve was hatched, lives on today, risen from the grave, and now intent on devaluing our future and keeping Americans in the dark about the truth of where their money comes from. Don't let any fancy talk from the New York Times or the liberal media or Treasury Secretary Geithner fool you. The federal government, that would be you and me, the American taxpayer, borrows money from the Federal Reserve and must repay that money with interest. Before the Fed, before the Fed existed, the Treasury directly circulated currency backed by gold. Since the Fed, 
We pay interest just to have the money. We effectively rent our money from the Federal Reserve, and our money is just worthless pieces of paper. Does it make any sense that if we can't pay our bills with the money we have already rented from the Fed, that we should rent more money from the Fed? Of course not. But that's just what the president wants to do by raising the debt ceiling. If the American people ever wish to regain control of the government, we need to understand the monetary system and we need to alter materially the banking system so as to replace our debt based money out of thin air economy with an economy based on production, on savings, on capitalism, and on competition. Only then can true prosperity return. Boy, if we ever get to audit the Fed and its money lenders, the demand to end the Fed will become overwhelming.